This video showcases some of the fantastic food gardens in the Darabin Backyard Harvest Festival. There is something for all aspiring food gardeners here. Basil tells us about an innovative school garden that partners with local families to ensure plants and chickens are cared for all year round. Alison shows off the Northcote Library Community Garden and Food Forest. Robbie, Harry and Mara take us through their abundant, culturally rich and very unique home gardens. Follow these gardeners' journey and be inspired by their gardening tips and experiences. When we first established the garden, it became very apparent that if the garden was to survive and to be sustainable, we needed to involve the local community. The front part of the garden, here where I'm standing, is enjoyed by seven local families and they've made a tremendous contribution to the Croxton Garden not only during the week and during the course of the school term, but especially on the weekends and in the school holidays. This is often a challenging time for schools. How do we look after the garden uh, in, in the heat of summer when the fruit trees need to be watered? How do we maintain our chickens? We have seven lovely hens and uh, our local gardeners play a tremendous role in feeding the hens, talking to the hens, and collecting the eggs on the weekends and throughout the summer holidays. In this garden you can see a closed loop aquaponic system which is high density growing of vegetables in a system that also has fish. It's a closed loop system that combines growing rainbow trout and vegetables all in together. It's a symbiotic relationship where the fish poo is, is siphoned and cleaned through the uh, tanks behind me. In this small plot of land which measures 6 metres by 12 metres I have 13 fruit trees. Um, I have quite a few apple trees trained against the wall, against the fence. Um, also each apple tree here is multi-grafted which assists with pollination and also I have a variety of apples that are grown at different times of the season. Regardless of the fact that some say that um, plants or fruit trees won't grow um, if they're cramped in together, I find that um, quite the contrary. I do get productive fruit from a very, very small area. We've put aside um, quite a large garden bed area for um, the idea of a food forest. So. Um, at the moment it contains about six fruit trees, um, a whole heap of berries, there's herbs, there's um, at the moment we've planted beans, there's lots of medicinal plants as well. It operates like another, any other food forest with a canopy layer which is your fruit trees, your mid layer um, and then your ground covers as well. Um, and it should operate so that it becomes self-sustaining that as leaves drop off they will begin to compost throughout the garden as well. We wanted to plant as many vegetables as we could. Carrots, potatoes, corn, beans. And although the front garden is reasonably small, it is amazing how much we've been able to grow here. We wanted to grow our own food because of course, there's nothing better than picking a tomato when it's perfectly ripe and ah, just chomping into it, absolutely delicious. And also we planted lots of fruit trees and berries, plums, apricots. I have some tips for new gardeners. What I recommend is you start off small uh, in terms of growing herbs and once you've accomplished that task move on to seasonal vegetables uh, for example in the summer tomatoes, um, cucumbers, zucchinis, eggplants uh, once you've mastered that, you can move on to other types of vegetables that need a lot more um, care and time. And also a good tip would be to grow a lemon tree or two perhaps. Uh, many cuisines have lemon as their staple um, ingredient, so a good supply of fresh lemons is a must. We really hope to connect with children as well. We're, we are in a really high profile site here, 
sitting right next to the library and we have lots of young families and lots of children um, that we can really get involved with the garden in some way. So running children's workshops and, and developing our children's areas of the garden. I spend a lot of time in the garden and I've realised that the more time I spend, the better the results I get. Probably the biggest tip I would have for any gardener is if you can, spend as much time observing your garden. Especially during the summer when a week is an enormous amount of time. One moment you have no weeds, by the end of the week you have heaps. One moment there are no beans on your vine, the next by the end of the week you have heaps. And if you don't harvest them at that moment, they'll go a little bit stale or rotten. So I really enjoy trying to spend almost every day if I can in the garden. It gives me so much pleasure. One tip I would give, as this garden's 100% um, organic and we cannot use any chemicals in it, one spray I use to keep the bugs off is a mixture of molasses. We use molasses mixed with water and a bit of a washing up liquid as just to um, make it thinner. And we spray this on the underside of the leaves to stop uh, the bugs coming. The, the bugs do not like the sweet taste of the molasses so and it forms a protective coating on top of the, the leaf surface. Um, composting is something um, that we're just really starting to get our teeth into in the garden and we have um, a really interesting system. We've just, got, we've just got two bins at the moment but we envisage that that will move to um, a bay composting system where we can compost some of the larger um, green waste materials from the garden. But at the moment we've got a system where people um, who don't have compost bins, um, members of our Friends of the Garden and our core gardening group who might live in flats or have small rental properties are bringing in their um, home waste, their green waste and, and food scraps to add to the compost bin. And um, we plan to, to perhaps work with some local cafes as well and see if we can really get a, a, a waste management system for the garden that utilises our community resources and really connects us into those as well. And that will have a number of outcomes and one of them is of course that hopefully we'll have this wonderful compost to add to the garden but we'll also be doing our bit to reduce the amount of waste that's going to landfill. I use organic principles in this garden. Um, I use basically sheep manure and pea straw only and I find the food that is produced is uh, flavoursome and um, fresh. For example the apples that I grow are crispy and juicy and sure a few are eaten by bugs but I know exactly where my food is coming from. I think uh Having had a, introduced a hothouse to our garden has been a great, a great asset in terms of seed saving and sowing seeds for the summer crops. And it's also meant that we've been able to grow our own tomato seedlings or cucumber seedlings early in the, very, in the fourth term. And these have been able to go in the ground and get off to a great start for the summer. And also growing companion plants that attract bees and increase the yield of the fruit or the vegetables and in turn you get a lot more fruit for the same amount of um, area. We very quickly learned that it was important to conserve water and to harvest water. So when we first moved in, we bought a 9,000 litre water tank and then over the years, we've added an extra 8,000 litres of water as well in the form of small 1,000 litre tanks. So we have a total of 17,000 litres of water for the garden. That water has kept us going in the garden. We almost rarely use any water, potable water. The 17,000 litres takes us a long way. The wicking beds have been essential to that as well. You cap the bottom of the bed with plastic, you line it with plastic and you put gravel and either a carpet or a jiggy or textile fabric to stop the water from escaping into the groundwater. And you keep the water always within the garden bed, it stays there permanently with a little outlet pipe for ex excess water. Since having these wicking beds, wicking because the roots of the plants wick up or suck up the water, 
I am able to garden far more effectively. I also have a lot of native trees and grasses as that make up my ornamental plant mix and they use very little water. Some of the water saving tips that I can offer are mulching uh, heavily with pea straw, watering at the roots only and not the leaves. I love the lush greenness of it, watching my daughter walk through this space, the shaded space. Really enjoy seeing her come home and before she makes her way into the house she'll pick some of the logan berries along the driveway and then she goes and see how the raspberry bush is going. I'm ever experimenting with what I grow. Um, I'm always trialling new things um, and always rotating the crops around. If you plant the same uh, plants in the same place every year, you're susceptible to diseases. So I always try and rotate crops around and plant a variety of different crops. Some with success, some with failure, but that's gardening. Mm -hmm.